Hi, and welcome back to Allen High School's discussion of pre-AP chemistry, 10th grade honors chemistry. We're talking about the laboratory, and we're going to move into a discussion of mistakes and sources of error. Now, there was a little example on the vacuum cleaner. We're going to do that together in class as a group. So that's why I've skipped that. Don't worry about that. I won't be holding you responsible for it. Uh, an another difficult part of a lab report and not sure, well, I guess I do understand why, and so we're going to take a long time to work on it in class. What is the difference between a mistake and a source of error? In your lab reports, you will often be asked for sources of error in the experiment. If we can identify sources of error, we can find ways to redesign and improve and invent and come up with new pieces of equipment, new ways of doing things, and, and the excitement just goes on. And oh, uh, sorry, I got carried away there. Um, you get the idea, all right? Uh, what we're going to be looking for are what we call errors and, and not mistakes. If you calculate something wrong, that's a mistake. An error always has to do with the data. As long as my data is okay, even if I make a mistake in my calculations, I, I can simply redo my calculations. I don't even need to redo the experiment. Okay, so we're focusing on the data. That's one big thing. All right, now a mistake is a screw up. All right, if you did a mistake, you, you spilt something, you didn't follow the procedure properly, uh, your neighbor spit in your beaker, I, I don't know. But it's a screw up caused by somebody in the lab. Now, one way you can tell if it's a mistake is if it's a screw up, if it's a mistake, you simply have to redo the lab so that you don't make the same mistake again, all right? So in the lab, if you've made a mistake, you may have to go back and redo the lab, all right? Now, experimental errors are due to limitations in the procedure, in, in the design, in the equipment, and we're going to talk quite a bit about equipment in just a little while, in, in, in the equipment that was used. And, and sometimes it's the only equipment that you have, and, and that's okay. You're willing to accept that degree of error, all right? It's very different. Now, notice the operative term here. Instead of redoing the lab, an error would cause you to redesign the lab. What piece of equipment could I do better? How could I redesign the whole order of the process? Do I need to take more time on a step or less time on a step? Um, that type of thing. Uh, that's redesign issues. Okay. For example, maybe something in the experiment required a person to determine the color. Well, color is very subjective and some people are colorblind and they don't even see color as well. And so that's not the best design. It may work in a pinch, but it might be better to use a piece of equipment that measures the absorbance or the wavelength of the color, right? So that's what I'm talking about with redesign. Can we do it more precisely? Hold that thought. We're going to talk about uh, precision in a little bit more detail later. Could it be done with less contamination? Were there steps in there that it was very difficult to get rid of contamination? Were the variables that were supposed to be controlled really controlled? You may think you had the temperature controlled in your experiment, but maybe it fluctuated a degree or two throughout the experiment. Okay, Are there some sort of assumptions that were made in collecting the data? Assumptions about properties and behaviors of chemicals and in chemical reactions. Um, and we mentioned that subjectivity in interpreting the data. And so all of these make us think of ways to redesign our laboratory experiments. Okay, um, You know what is a key one? Transfer. So often, when we, the more we have to transfer from one vessel to another vessel, every time there's going to be loss loss of product and some reactants depending on the step every time. So we want to consider those things, okay? Again, it's about redesign. All right, um, so we're going to talk about these sources of errors when we get uh, into class, since that's something we're doing in class and I'm not going to do on a video for you. But let's take a look at these next ones. What we want to say is that a human mistake, I'm going to put HM, 
for human mistake, or is it a source of error? And I'm going to put SE for source of error. Okay. So in this first one, it says the student miscalculated the density of the material. This is your cue here. That's a screw up. That's a human mistake. We don't even have to redo the lab. All we have to do is recalculate. Okay. So that one doesn't really involve redesign at all. All right. Um, the next one, the temperature of the room was assumed to be constant throughout the experiment, but was not. This is a source of error. It is a limitation. We're, we're not measuring temperature. Uh, it's an assumption. It's an underlying assumption, and it limits our data a little bit. So there's a couple of ways we could address this. We could measure the temperature and possibly account for those temperature changes in our calculations, or we could try to put it in a more temperature-controlled environment. So we could, you know, act like my son's a mechanical engineer. Sorry, I didn't spell that very well. My son's a mechanical engineer. And so could he come up with a, you know, a box that we can have it heated and maintained at a constant temperature? Right, that's redesign. Okay. Now, um, number three here. All right, lab directions said to simply pour your powdered chemical from the weigh boat into the flask. Um, when doing this, an unnoticeable amount of chemical remained on the flask. Okay. This is typically going to be, it's unnoticeable, you didn't make a mistake, you were doing a good job. This is typically going to be considered a source of error. Okay, And a way to accommodate that is if you're going to be dissolving it in water anyway, you may be able to rinse that way boat with a little bit of the water that you're going to dissolve the substance in. Okay? Um, then there's, instead of whey boats, there's actually whey papers that some of them tend to cling less to chemicals, right? So, all right, the next one, student used too much NaCl. That's the key here. Student used too much NaCl. Pay attention. You don't want to have to repeat the experiment because that may mean coming after school and you don't want to do that. So be careful. Student added the solutions in the wrong order. That is a human mistake. You screwed up. You've got to read your procedures. Pay very, very close attention to those. So that's a human mistake. The student compared the results to his hand-drawn graph, as requested in the lab directions, and estimated the volume to be about 145. What that means is that we drew a graph by hand, right? And, and then we tried to read values off of the graph, right? And that's not a bad way to do it. That's, you know, commonly done. Um, but it's going to have some experimental error. It's a source of error. And what you could do in this case is maybe graph it using Excel or some sort of spreadsheet. And then you can mathematically get the equation for the line and you could calculate. Okay, so sometimes people don't have access to Excel and we want to improve your graphing skills. And so we've asked you to do it by hand. And it's going to be limited. That's a limitation of the design and the instructions. Okay. Now the last one, 20 drops of each solution were added to the reaction. Each drop was assumed to be the same uh, volume. And we'll do that a lot, especially if we're doing more qualitative where we're looking to see what happens with the reaction rather, rather than developing how much is produced or, or formed. And so that's going to be a source of error. And if we needed measurements, we have pipettes that are more accurate. So pipettes or burettes would be more accurate and they would deliver, we can actually measure uh, on the scale how much is being delivered. Okay. Next video is going to be on safety, so until then, I'm going to bug out.